you're going to go out and buy a chip, um, also buy the case. And if you're going to buy the case, you might have, you know, a lot of people are into modding and pimping out their stuff, so that could also be a possibility for you. You know, translucent cases, chrome cases, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm going to finish putting my cube together and wrap it up. When the GameCube powers up, it's going to try to load an external drive code, which allows enhanced disk read compatibility. And then it's going to boot into the main uh, boot menu. The first thing you can do is either a direct disk boot, so if you have a valid GameCube game or homebrew in there, you can boot it up. You can boot the original BIOS, or you can enter the configuration menu. Inside the configuration menu, uh, you can just set the display mode. Mode. Uh, I've forced mine to set always as NTSC. Now, the good thing about having a chip in your cube is that you can actually play games from not your region. So, there are a lot of really nice collector edition games that are in PAL only format that normally would not load in my cube. The default boot action, which in my case I've set it to the main menu, you can change this to automatically go to the GameCube BIOS or automatically. Uh, boot your game. Holding the X key when you uh, when you turn on your cube will perform this said action. For me, I told it to go to the original BIOS. The lid sensor pass through. Um, this is used if you have uh, a GameCube case that has actually been removed because you can't fit original discs in, or for some reason that your lid sensor is not functioning properly. Now since I have a chip inside of mine. This allows me to tie the chip in with the sensor, and that's with the pass-through device. I can also set this to override if the if the system is disassembled or not. That'll actually pose problems with action replay and other multi-disc games because if you put it through always closed, it won't detect that you've opened the lid. The built-in audio stream fix is is very important because some games actually use streaming audio and if you don't have the built-in audio stream fix then the audio will come up as static or noise and it'll just ruin your your gameplay experience the drive code selection now as I've explained earlier very briefly that the drive code is actually the firmware or the drive loader firmware that loads on your actual optical drive by using an external drive code, a drive loader code, or drive code, this will enhance compatibility with disk reading. So typically, the original optical drive of the GameCube is specifically coded to read GameCube disks to improve compatibility with GameCube disks. Now, using an external drive code widens that compatibility. So although the GameCube drive is very bitchy and very picky about what media it can read or cannot read, this will widen the spectrum of the different types of media you can read. You can also check the version information of your console, which, yay, big freaking whoop de doo The Disk Explorer is just that. It is just an explorer. Now, I have actually recently upgraded to the Viper uh, Extreme chip, so you might not see the Explore Flash file system. The Viper GameCube Extreme, in fact, has, I do believe, 16 megs of onboard flash file system, which means you can actually put doll files and other executable homebrew on the actual chip itself. Otherwise, you'll just be sit stuck with the, the Explore Disk function, which will let you explore the data that's on the disk. The Cobra also has a built-in cheat code system, which I really like. It's native to Action Replay, so if you're familiar with Action Replay, then you, you can use the Action Replay system. You can actually load the codes through the actual uh, Explorer menu. You have to have the codes set on, a, on the disk in a specific way. I'm not going to explain it. It's in the README of the cheat system. The change disk function is just that. It allows you to change the disk. Because the drive is always co and constantly spinning the disk, you can't just open the lid or grab the disk and pull it out. 
you have to hit the change disk button to allow changing of the disks. The plugin. Now, the Cobra, Cobra BIOS, as well, uh, BIOS as well as the Viper GameCube, GameCube and GameCube Extreme allows you to as, uh, assign inside the BIOS a, a .dol file that will allow you to run it as a plugin extension. Now, you can set this to practically any DAW file, an NES emulator, uh, a game ripper. Uh, I use SD load personally. That, that way, I can just put in my my GameCube adapter that I made, the memory adapter for that I made in the GameCube Soft Mod segment, and load SD load for my chip instead of loading it from Action Replay. These are some of the basic features of the Cobra BIOS that has been put on my Viper GameCube mod chip. There are also other mod chips out there, but these are just some of the basic features to look for. Hey, everybody.